Hey, welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hearts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark. I'm so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, a pen, a paper, your phone, however you want to take notes and get ready for today's message. Hey, hey, welcome back. We are in a series called Family First. We're having conversations about relationships, marriage, family, all sorts of things. This is not just for married people. This is for singles so you don't screw things up. This is for people who are divorced so you don't screw things up again. Have a better plan next time around. Uh, but I just want to encourage you, real quick, the end of this month, we're having that comedy show on a Sunday night. It's going to be great. Cleto is hilarious. Listen, there is such thing as called the winter blues in New York. It's, it's literal depression mm -hmm. that sets in because of the cold weather, being indoors, lack of vitamin D, all those things. So the Bible says a merry heart does good like a medicine. Yeah. Come on out for a free comedy night. Laugh your butt off, let the joy of the Lord be your strength, and have a good time with your family, all right? So last week, we talked about the topic of submission, and we did get a lot of feedback. We got emails, we got text messages, um, ideas, people asking different questions about yeah. their relationships, and uh, there's just some things that we can't fix or address in the full community of believers and, yeah. and from the stage, uh, specific questions that people wanted us to um, answer. So I'm just going to say it like this. If, if you're experiencing domestic violence or abuse, that, that's not in line with what we were talking about yeah. last week, go get some help. Reach out. Mm -hmm. Reach out to counseling. Reach out to therapy. Um, if it's something that your, your partner um, just will not do, then, then reach out and get help behind their back. Uh, it, it is not okay. Right? Yeah. Domestic violence and abuse is not okay. Mm -hmm. And in lines of biblical submission, we were not, we were not referring to that at all. Yeah. Okay? So today's topic is love. Mm -hmm. Love languages, uh, knowing each other's uh, way to interpret and speak love. Mm -hmm. And we're also kind of talking about self-sacrifice. Yes. So our text today is going to be from 1 Corinthians 13. This is known as the passage of love. Love. It, you, many of you probably have heard this passage in Christian weddings, and it starts like this. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. Nothing. I'm nothing. You know, it's one of those things that I mess with church people all the time. Because church people want to talk about how anointed they are and how much they love God. But they're some of the nastiest people out in the streets. I'm like, you're fake. You're fake. The Bible says it straight out. You're nasty to someone on the streets. You ain't got love. You're nothing. You're nothing. You ain't no Christian. You ain't no holy person. Right? Just because you know three Bible verses, but you're nasty, the Bible says you're nothing. Right? I am nothing. It, love is the language that we need to speak as believers. Yeah. As we get into this topic, let's begin by praying. Father, we thank you that we could look into your word and you could speak to us today. Open the eyes of our understanding, enlighten us to your truth, yes. show us things to come. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. One of the biggest pain points in human existence is family. Family. It's one of the biggest pain points. I'm watching it with some of the young adults <laughs> that we're leading and coaching mm -hmm. and mentoring is that they're having a very hard time shifting from being child to adult. Mm -hmm. and, and not so much that they're not ready for adult responsibilities, but mom and dad, like mom and dad are the problem. Mom and dad are having a hard time shifting from, it, they're no longer a kid, mm -hmm. I need to treat them now like an adult. Yeah. And there's this conflict, you know, the, the young ones are asking me, they're saying, Pastor Mike, is it dishonoring my parents if I disagree with them? No. No, it's not dishonoring if you disagree. Mm -hmm. Now, how you go about disagreeing can be dishonoring. Yeah. Right? You screaming and hollering and like trying to uh, put them down. That's different than saying, hey, wait, I have a different viewpoint about this. Yeah. My generation looks at these things differently. 
Those kind of conversations are good and healthy and needed yeah. in your home to understand one another. Mm -hmm. A great resource is Timothy Keller's book, The Meaning of Marriage, Facing the Complexities of Commitment with Wisdom and God. And he states this, he makes this statement. The gospel is this. We are more sinful and flawed in ourselves than we ever dared to believe. Mm -hmm. Okay? But there's good news. Yet, at the very same time, we are more loved and accepted in yes. Jesus Christ than we ever dare hope. This is the only kind of relationship that will really transform us. Mm -hmm. So until you understand the love of God for you, yeah. it is really impossible to build a foundation of love in any other relationship. This has to be right before this is right. Yeah. And I'm telling you, you think that you can work around it, but you can't. Yeah. Were you going to say something? No, I agreed. Oh, okay. <laughs> this series on Family First is not from our sheer awesomeness as a couple. In fact, it might be the opposite. <laughs> it, it's from... Uh, some great mistakes that we've made um, that maybe you can relate to and hopefully avoid mm -hmm. in your relationships. And our hope for single people is that you can set some expectations yeah. for what your marriage relationship is going to look like. Mm -hmm. Many single people go into the marriage relationship with no expectations yeah. and no communicated expectations. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they wonder why a year, two years into this marriage, everything's falling apart, yeah. but they never talked about anything, mm -hmm. right? I just got certified in a new premarital counseling program called Symbis. If you're an engaged couple and you need premarital counseling, yo, know, shoot me an email because for school I have to, like, do an analysis of, of a couple. So hit me up. Um, <laughs> help me with my schoolwork. But you got to be engaged. <laughs> but like one of the exercises is, what is your expectation to who's cleaning the house? Mm -hmm. What is your expectation to who's taking out the trash? And when you don't talk about that stuff yeah. and the trash isn't taken out, why are you taking out the trash? I thought you were going to take out the trash. Well, in my house, my dad always took out the trash. The man takes out the trash. Oh, the man, did. you know. And all of a sudden, you got these fights of things that we could have talked about mm -hmm. early on. All right, so this is what our hope is. So tell us what love is. What's love? It is, this is the basic question that needs to be answered whenever you have a sermon like this on family. And the word love is defined in a ton of different ways, but it's often confused with lust. Lust. Mm -hmm. Lust is a fleeting emotion. Why should it get quiet when we said <laughs> lust? Let's be honest, you did not marry your spouse out of love originally. You did not. Mm -hmm. you, you were attracted to them and married them out of lust, <laughs> <laughs> out of infatuation, mm -hmm. out of even nasty business. <laughs> That's what drew you mm -hmm. to them. Yeah. The, the appeal of that, the chase of that, that's what got you together. Mm -hmm. Then you realized a year in, oh, shoot, maybe I should love this person. <laughs> right? That becomes the decision that you make yep. every single day when the butterflies ain't there. They're always there. They better be there. <laughs> <laughs> but when you think about love this way... <laughs> You ain't my wife. <laughs> so let's think about it. When we have these incorrect um, ideas of what love, love is, they don't last. That's why a lot of times you get with somebody because of love or because of some misconstrued idea of what you think love is, and then as soon as things get hard, you're out the door. But biblical love is completely different. Biblical love is hard. Hard. It is not easy. It's tough. It's difficult to attain. It's definitely not for the faint of heart. And it takes work and dedication. Only biblical love has longevity. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes, you could have a successful marriage for 5, 10 years without biblical love. Yeah. But 25, 30, mm -hmm. 45 years, 
without that, without the biblical foundation of love. Yeah. I mean, we're talking like non-Christians can understand and live biblical love. They can, they can have that. We're not talking about uh, being saved and set apart unto God and all that. We're not talking about that. We're talking about yeah. the, what the Bible says about love. If you do not love each other that way, it's not going to have longevity. Yeah, so when you think about it, it's not a matter of the heart. It's actually a matter of will. Ooh, because it's say a that choice. Again. Say that again, say that again. It's not a matter of the heart. It's a matter of will. It's a choice that you must make every single day, that the Holy Spirit helps you make every single day, because the flesh is incapable of doing it on their own. I mean, let's be honest. It is not hard for her to wake up every day and love all this. <laughs> it's not. Like, she's got it much easier than I do. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible's very clear that love is rooted in God himself. And the Bible gives us clear instructions as to what that love is. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 13, it's the verse that she began earlier. We want to we study the whole context for a moment. Yeah. If I speak in tongues of men and of angels but have not love, I am a noisy gong or clanging cymbal. If I have prophetic powers and understand all the mysteries and all knowledge... And have all faith. They're saying, if I'm the greatest church person, but I don't have love, yeah. I'm nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. So he says, okay, so then what is love? Love is patient and kind. Some of us already failed. <laughs> love does not envy or boast. Love is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. Yeah. In whose marriage? <laughs> right? Does not insist on its own way. Is not irritable or resentful. You know what that means is love doesn't hold a grudge. Yeah. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. You know the hard one in here is one, insists on its own way, does not rejoice in wrongdoings, resentful. In other translations, it keeps no record of when it's been wronged. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, <laughs> we've had to work really hard yeah. on setting guardrails for fighting. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about this? Act like you don't ever fight with your spouse. <laughs> okay? We've had to set guardrails for fighting. Yeah. We refuse to fight fair. Messed up, mess up your head, right? <laughs> Fighting fair means you hurt me, I hurt you. That's fair. Yeah. Fair is eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Fair is you raise your voice, I raise my voice. That's fair. Yeah. We refuse to fight fair, mm -hmm. right? Because if, it's, if our fights are a matter of somebody winning, we're both lost. Mm -hmm. Our fights have guardrails to keep us centered so that we come up with a resolution so that we don't have to have this fight again. Yeah. And one of those guardrails that we set up is we do not go fishing in the past. Yeah. We've made the choice that if something's not important enough to handle in the moment, then we're not bringing it up two weeks later. You don't get to bring it up two weeks later. You don't get to bring it up yeah. two weeks. I mean, God says when he forgives us, he puts our sin in the sea of forgetfulness. Yeah. So we say, yo, you don't get to go fishing in God's sea of forgetfulness. Mm -hmm. you, know? You, you know, this happens. You're starting to lose the argument. And another thing, three months ago, you did. Like, you just lost. You, you lo like, if it's a matter of trying to win, you lost. Don't bring up the past. Yeah. What are we arguing about right now? Well, I am. I'm arguing about every time you've done it for the last 22 years. All right, so either we're going to get over that, <laughs> yeah. or we're going to resolve it, mm -hmm. or we're not. But you ain't playing this game. You're not bringing up my past. Yeah. Cindy knows, like, that's one of the biggest, biggest things when we're having a disagreement or formulating a plan to get better. Mm -hmm. If you bring up my past against me, I'm going to shut down, yeah. and I'm probably going to walk out. Because neither one of us, none of us can change the past. Yeah. 
Even God himself does not violate the laws of nature to change your past. Mm -hmm. So why are you bringing up something I can't change? Yeah. You do that to hurt the person. And here's the thing. If you chose to forgive that in the past, then leave it there. Why are you bringing it back up? You either didn't actually forgive the person, or like he said, you're just trying to win. Which at that point, you probably didn't really forgive the person in the first place. Yeah. Yeah, forgiveness is kind of a hard one in this, in this realm. Yeah. Because... Although I forgave you, I didn't forget mm -hmm. what you did. And in the moment of emotion, yes. in the moment of anger, instead of coming to resolution, I just want to say something to hurt you. And, and, and not even so much to hurt you, but to either shut you up yeah. or to win. I won up to you. I remember what you did. You can't talk to me about this. Mm -hmm. And, and th there's no health in that. Yeah. There's no health in guys, men, 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 men. There's no health in inflicting an emotional wound on the woman that God has anointed you to protect. Mm. You are literally inflicting a wound on the one that you're called and anointed to protect. Yeah. Now listen, maybe we've already done that. Maybe we've inflicted wounds on our spouse and our marriages. There absolutely is forgiveness. Mm -hmm. There absolutely is the anointing of God and the Holy Spirit that can come in and restore those moments. But it's going to take some trust of not losing your lid yeah. and, and yelling and screaming at your spouse in an, in an argument. Those things got to be worked on if you want healthy relationships and if you want to operate in love. Yeah. We want to give you some resources and some help. Uh, so we have three points today on how to have a better marriage how to divorce-proof your marriage moving forward, how to uh, recover from divorce, how to plan, if you're single, how to plan for a healthy marriage. And here's a great, great, great tool. Number one, um, choose to love your family members the way they most enjoy being loved. I read that one out loud. <laughs> choose to love your family members the way they most enjoy being loved. Yeah. So many of us express love the way we want to be loved mm -hmm. instead of expressing love the way the person wants to be loved. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little tip, something in our house. Uh, and, and this isn't a rule. This is just, you know, knowing each other. We've been married 22 years. Just kind of, she knows something that I like. To me, it ministers a lot of life and love to me if she makes me a cup of coffee in the morning. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. She's going to go down and make it anyway while she's letting the dog out, right? You're going to make yourself a cup of coffee, make me a cup of coffee. Yeah. It, it makes me know that you thought about me, mm -hmm. you care about my caffeination needs. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a way I, I feel loved when. Yeah. I feel loved when. And, and she has different ways that she feels loved and, mm -hmm. and things that I can show for her. This goes along with the concept of the five love languages. If you mm -hmm. would like resources from that website, it's the number five lovelanguages.com. They have paid and free quizzes that you can take. They have them for children and teenagers as well. Yeah. So that you can figure out each other's love languages and minister that to them. So let's be honest. There are some love languages that really aren't that compatible. For instance, if you're somebody whose love language is touch, you love it when somebody's hugging on you, kissing on you, holding your hand, and your significant other hates touching. <laughs> problem. That's a problem. <laughs> and when we're talking about touching, we're not talking about what happens in the bedroom. We're talking yeah, about... Yeah, like, come on, man. Like, we're not talking... Like, every man thinks his love language is touch. <laughs> we're not talking about that part of your body. Yeah. Okay? We're talking about, like, you've got to be snuggling on the couch at all times. Like, mm -hmm. oh, my gosh, like, on our honeymoon, here's, we're not going to go there. I just want to tell you to say, <laughs> on our honeymoon, like, we thought we were going to be all cute, like, oh, we're going to snuggle all night. So, like, we, we're in the bed, and she's in my arm, we're looking at each other's eyes, and we're going to fall asleep like this. And I close my eyes, and I start getting an anxiety attack, because <laughs> I'm like, I can't sleep like this. <laughs> Like, she seems to get off of me, like, 
feel suffocated. I had no idea. She's thinking the same thing. Oh my God, I can't sleep like this. This is horrible. Like, we made the wrong decision. We're not supposed to be married. And Files is like, hey, is it all right if like we don't do this? Like, he, oh, she's like, oh, thank God. She rolled to her side. I rolled to mine. 22 years later, it yeah. works. Don't touch me when I'm trying to sleep. Mm -mm. Yeah, nah. <laughs> I, know, I know for me, um, I thought touch was really high on mine. It's not my number one because, like, I, don't touch me when I'm sweaty. Like, don't come in behind me and, like, touch me when I'm, when I'm sweaty. Or if I'm, like, doing work that I'm really concentrating on, don't come touch me. Like, mm -hmm. leave me alone. Like, ah! And if you ever feel that way when someone's touching you, like, ah! Touch is not your highest. <laughs> All right? it's, not, it's not your number one. Let's just throw that one out. <laughs> yeah, so the second one is, and this one's very important, because this one it applies to everybody, regardless of what kind of relationship you're in, is actually knowing how you like to receive love. I think that's difficult because you can't expect what you don't express. Yes. So you if you cannot don't not expect what you do not express. So if you don't let your loved ones know how you want to feel love, they can't necessarily get it right. Can we talk about that for a second? Mm -hmm. Can we talk about that for a second? Yeah. Listen, one Valentine's Day, I come home and my wife is like, how come you never think about me? How come you didn't buy me anything for Valentine's Day? Everybody else is buying things. You don't ever think about buying me something for Valentine's Day? And I'm like, Okay, I was riding the struggle bus that day. <laughs> we haven't celebrated Valentine's Day in 20 years. We've never done Valentine's Day, right? But, you know, if you shot me a little text message that was like, hey, I'm feeling some way today. Can you pick me up like seven dozen roses? I would have done it. <laughs> but I come home to her expectation of something she never expressed. Yeah. Yo, ladies. Dudes don't read minds, and they don't read subtle hints either. Just tell us straight out what you want. What are you expecting? Because I can go make that happen. But it's like, I want you to know you don't know me at all. So you wanted me to order out dinner? Is that what you're saying? Like, I... <laughs> We could door dash. <laughs> but we do that, don't we? I mean, think about it. He's not wrong when he says we, so Valentine's Day is not a day that we celebrate because our, his birthday is in February, and then like three weeks later in March is our anniversary. So we've always just kind of let that one go by. So why would he think 20 years in that all of a sudden I wanted something for Valentine's Day? I don't know, but I'm still scarred. <laughs> <laughs> It's a great conversational tool. Hey, yeah. honey, my love language is this. I feel most loved when you do mm -hmm. X, Y, Z. Yeah. And express that. Okay, if you are gifts, honey, I love it when you're out and, and there's just something that you see that I would just love and you yeah. pick it up for me. That means the world to me. Because a person whose love language is gifts isn't even attached to the value of the gift as much as it is you thought about me yeah. and got me something. Mm -hmm. I don't understand those people. <laughs> I don't. Like, gifts is probably the lowest. Like, it's we're really awesome. bad gift givers. <laughs> like, horrible. We, we didn't even give each other gifts for Christmas. I think we did stockings. Yeah. And, like, our stockings are, like, deodorant and shampoo. <laughs> but, like, for us, knowing that my number one love language is quality time yeah. and her number one love language is quality time, we invest our money instead of gifts into vacations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We want to create experiences for our children. We want yeah. to get them out of New York, see that their world is bigger than New York, yeah. uh, spend time together at water parks, amusement parks, mm -hmm. things that our kids can enjoy and, and we can laugh with them. I mean, we had kids for a reason. We like our kids, <laughs> right? And so yeah. we want to invest the money into mm -hmm. quality family yeah. time. So we're going to do a big vacation every single year when the kids are out of school so that we can enjoy that. Now, for me, good. Well, I was going to say, and also, like, once it finally fit into our budget, we started implementing our own vacation. 
so about five years now. We have our own vacation in March around our anniversary. Kid free for a whole week. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Santo Jesus. <laughs> and then we do our vacation with the kids, you know, at some point in the summer. Yeah, so for me, like, I've got this idea, like, family, how cool would it be we rent one of those drivable RVs and we drive from New York to California and, like, stop and do different shops and sightseeing. All, like, let's take a whole month and do this. And they're like, ill. <laughs> like, ill. Dad, we could just fly there and then vacation and experience all that and just fly back and it's over. And I'm like, yeah, but the, t the experience of seeing things and stop, like, ill. <laughs> so you got to also know that you cannot force... Yeah your love language on other people. Mm -hmm. You can express it, and then it's up to them whether they do or do not fill your love tank. Mm -hmm. And then number three is this. If you want all your relationships to fail, do the absolute opposite <laughs> of 1 Corinthians 13. <laughs> if you want your relationships to, to, to succeed, try implementing 1 Corinthians 13 as much as you can. Yeah. Be patient and kind. Mm -hmm. Be patient and kind. Okay, now, my wife and I were raised very different cultural backgrounds. Um, we, our, some of our biggest fights were over food and how we cooked. And she put the whole thing of rice in the refrigerator. I'm like, where's the Tupperware? Where's the Tupperware? And she's like, no, you see, Bobby, because. <laughs> I don't sound like that. <laughs> And second of all, we all know that the rice is better when you reheat it in the caldero. Why would I take it out? <laughs> my lenses, my, my lenses say that's lazy? <laughs> that's my lenses, right? I'm just saying what you bring to the relationship, the expectation. Man, the first day dinner is done. All of a sudden, she puts all the pots right in the fridge. And I'm like, what is this? <laughs> what? I was like, Tupperware. Tupperware. It's what it's for. Leftovers. And just, it was, it was a big fight. It was a big thing that we had going on. Um, but also, like, you know, the tone of voice in which she would use to express unhappiness would just set me off. I'm like, yo, why you got to talk so nasty to me? Like, what, I'm not? I'm like, what do you mean you're not? Like, you push, put on a demon voice. <laughs> I would appreciate it if you would put your laundry in the laundry bag. I'm like, yo, don't talk to me like that. <laughs> I'm like, what? This is how my family spoke at home. How, and how would you like me to approach you? And <laughs> not like that. What? I'm not lying. I just think sometimes people are a little soft. <laughs> I'm going to be a pastor right now. Because I've got to come back, but it's not godly. So I'm going to let you keep going. <laughs> All right. So we just wanted to give you a quick look as to what the five love languages actually are. And just a quick explanation of all of them. The first one is gifts, which is pretty self-explanatory. Um, this person loves receiving gifts. If you go, not even so much on a trip, if you go anywhere and see something that kind of screams their name and brings it home, they're extremely happy. Yeah, so... Be careful not to believe that this person's materialistic. Yeah. Because that can be the negative connotation that comes with it. It's not so much the gift, mm -hmm. it's that you thought about them. Yeah. It's that you put them into the vacation or you put them into the trip. Mm -hmm. You saw something and were like, oh my God, I got to get it. This fits them perfectly. And then when you do get something that fits them perfectly, yeah. it's just that much more important to them. Mm -hmm. But it's not, it's not the materialism. <laughs> And then the second one is quality time. 
Now this one's a little trickier because one, it's time for time. There's no quick way around it. No it's shortcut. an hour for an hour or however long they want to hang out. And this doesn't just mean being in the same room as somebody. This means they want your time. They want to know that you're paying attention to them. They want to know that you know who they are. And if you can maybe plan some quality time for them, even better. So we are both quality time, but our view of what quality time is are drastically different. <laughs> right? I want attention. I want attention, right? She just wants me to be within a 50-foot radius. I don't got to talk to her. <laughs> I don't got to do nothing. So for me, I'm like, something big for me, I love movies, right? And so I'm like, oh, there's this new movie. Let's watch it. And so I'm sitting down, and I'm in the movie, right? I got it on the screen. I got my snacks and everything. And then something happens. I'm like, oh, did you see that? And what? <laughs> or I'm asleep. Or she's sound asleep. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I literally want to hurt you. <laughs> I thought we were watching this together, right? I thought this was a moment. But I, what we look at as quality time yep. is very, very different. So I have to express to her, mm -hmm. okay, this is a moment that I need quality time. Yeah. And so for me, like, if she's on her couch and I'm on my couch and we're both reading a book, that's still an interactive event to me, <laughs> right? It's an interactive event. So she starts giggling about something that she read. I'm like, what, 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 what? <laughs> oh, nothing, nothing. It's just about me. It's so silly. <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> like, what was funny about it? But you don't, because you don't like my books. <laughs> I don't really care about the book, but I want to know why you're laughing. <laughs> right? And so, like, and then even me, like, I read something good, mm -hmm. I've, I got to read it out loud. Yeah. Like, I want an audience <laughs> as, I'm, as I'm reading my own book, you know, or reading the book. Anyway, quality times can look different depending yes. on what the person actually wants out of it. So, for example, we went um, to, you know, one of our vacations, me and her, and we got one of those uh, rooms that had, like, its own beach area, and it's so secluded and private, and we go down, and we're sitting on the beach together, just us. I'm, I'm bored. <laughs> and then I'm like... Hun, is there something wrong with us? Like, I'm bored. I want to go be around people. Is that okay? And she's like, oh, good, me too. I'm bored too. So, like, we want the quality time, but we actually like being around people yeah. in, in our quality time with each other. Mm -hmm. And also, like he said, a lot of his quality time involves activity. Activities. Hiking, fishing, whatever, being outside. Building at something. At the pool, building something, remodeling something. Yeah. Where I want quiet <laughs> like summertime, just leave me on my lounger by the swimming pool. You could be within 50 feet. Leave the music in the background, and I'm a happy guy. Isolation, but you can't do anything else. <laughs> Number three, personal touch. Pri um, physical physical touch. touch. So when I took the test, I think that's why it's important to take these kind of tests. I was actually really surprised that physical touch was as high as it was for me. But what I realized is that physical touch is not just the bedroom type physical touch. It's, you know, just coming up behind me and kissing my shoulder, kissing my neck when I'm making dinner, rubbing my leg if we're on the couch together, like that kind of stuff. I give her physical touch. <laughs> but then she don't appreciate it. <laughs> I know, I listen, I know the whole like caress me and kiss me on the back of the neck. But when you're cooking dinner, she got a fat booty. <laughs> so that's what's sticking out the most. It's, it's looking at me. It's talking to me. So it just, it wants a slap. It, want, ah, it just wants, it wants it. So then I go, do that. And he's like, how come you can't come and just kiss me? How come you can't just come hold me? I said, that was coming. That was next. didn't even get there. You didn't give me enough time. I don't want to feel your palm 10 minutes later. <laughs> <laughs> she has very specific guidelines as to what physical touch is. Anyways, the next one <laughs> is words of affirmation. No, 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 no. Let's not ask you about that. No, for like, I know I'm being facetious, but for some people, like, you're not giving them their love language. Yeah. 
So then you're, you're not, so then you're actually using it against them. Mm -hmm. And I'm making light of it and it's a joke right now. And, and if someone has experienced this to the extent where it's ruining your marriage, like I apologize for even joking about it, but, but it can happen. Like yeah. if, if I never, ever gave her physical touch the way that she appreciates it, like laying down and snuggling on the couch, mm -hmm. watching a movie, if I never give her that, then yeah, it is going to affect the marriage. Yeah. And I can come back and say, wow, but I touch your butt all the time. But that's not what I'm asking you for. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So it keeps coming back to communication and expressing what you want. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the next one is words of affirmation. And I think that you explained this one better um, last time as to like who's giving you the words of okay, affirmation. Okay. So, so let's look at this. And, and I'm not trying to be too weird about this, but for men, they need words of affirmation in the bedroom from their wife. Okay. I, I don't need to go into details of that. When a woman says a word, anything other than words of affirmation while in the bedroom experience, it, it will destroy a man. Mm -hmm. It will destroy him if there's any words during that moment that do not uplift him and build him up. Yeah. They need that. They need those words of affirmation in a bedroom setting, in a bedroom moment. But for a man, only a man can affirm a man. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean as much when a woman says to a man, I'm so proud of you. You're doing such a great job. Well, for a man, they're kind of like, well, you, you don't know what it's like to, to do what I do. Yeah. You don't know what it's like, the, the, the burden that I carry and the weight <clears throat> that I carry, the decisions that I have to make. But when a man is affirmed by a man, especially his father, mm -hmm. it holds more weight than any other comment yeah. or affirmation in the world. And when a man does not get affirmed by his father, or an older man that has wisdom and understanding as to yeah. what it means to be a man, a man will always be insecure and looking for affirmation. Yeah. They will always be looking for it. I think one of the easiest ways to um, show that is almost like an athlete. Like let's say you're a football player in high school or in college or something. And you're used to, you know, you're D1, you're great. You're used to everybody telling you how great you are. But it is not the same as if you met an NFL football player yeah. who was like, kid, I've been watching you. You're going places. Yeah. You know that amount of appreciation for what they're telling you is not the same as your mom telling you. Because your mom should be telling you that you're great anyways. Men, <laughs> your wife, if, her words, if she's words of affirmation, she needs to be affirmed by you. Mm -hmm. And if you won't affirm her... Someone else will. Someone else will. Okay? So if your spouse, if your wife is a words of affirmation person, it is important to yeah. find something that you can affirm them for. Okay? And it may be a weekly note or a text message mm -hmm. or something. I'm, I'm just so impressed by the way that you raise our kids. I'm so impressed by this. Dinner was amazing. Even if it was like an 80 out of 100. Say, oh my God, great, greatest roast beef ever. Just something if they are a words of affirmation person. If not, they are, they are, their love tank is going to be empty. Yeah. And they will be tempted to get it filled by someone else who does notice how hard they are trying. Yeah. Last one. Last one, and this is probably our least favorite for both of us, is acts of service. These are the people who want stuff done. So you either need to help them with a project or like if they disappear and they come home, one Surprise of their projects Surprise them with a project, done. yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Acts of service is his mama. Yeah, so that's really one of the hard things about loving my mom. She's not watching. She's at church, so she's not watching online. It's okay. <laughs> my mom's love language is acts of service. So like I know that if I go on vacation to go visit her at her house, when I show up, there's going to be a to-do list. Honey, real quick, real quick, just five things real quick that you could do for me, please. You know, and I'm like, I'm on vacation. But <laughs> she wants acts of service. Mm -hmm. She wants, she had that list waiting for me. Yeah. Specifically for her baby boy, because no one can do it like her baby boy. Acts of service. Me, acts of service isn't very high. I don't want to go on vacation, come back, and you painted my office. Yeah. Like, that, that doesn't minister life to me. Um, so... One, I don't like surprises, and two, if you messed up my paint and you didn't paint as good, that, then it's going to bother me. <laughs> then I feel like a jerk because you didn't paint it as good as I painted it. Yeah. So acts of service, though, if, if it's someone's love language, cook for them, right? So a date for them is you thought of dinner and you cooked for them. 
or you went on and mowed the lawn, or you did yeah. something that they've been wanting to get done, and you went out and did it. Mm -hmm. All right? Sorry. <clears throat> so, like B. Mike said, let's take the quiz. Find out more about yourselves. Find out about your family. I mean, really, just take a look at them, even without taking the quiz. How do they generally show love? That's probably how they want to receive it. Like our youngest, high physical touch. That kid is in your neck, he's laying on you. Every day he gets on the bus and he goes, bye mommy, I love you. When I get home, we're gonna snuggle on the couch. Every day, bar none. Yeah. So I really hope he marries somebody who likes to snuggle. <laughs> Wisdom would say. <laughs> Verse five in our study today talked about does not insist in its own way. Yeah. It's very important that you find others' mm -hmm. love languages and speak that to them. If you want a successful yeah. relationship, speak the language that says I'm loved yep. to them. This is why you got into this relationship, okay? Um, it takes a lot of work. It's gonna take a lot of effort to figure that out and to maintain it and to be consistent. Yeah. Uh, a lot of you already know the five love languages. A lot of you already know what yours is and what your spouse is or your family members are, but you don't use it. Right? That, that's foolish. Yeah. Apply it in your relationship. Apply it to what you're doing. It can be a great tool. It's a great takeaway from today. The book by Timothy Keller, if you were interested in that one, I kind of breezed over that in the beginning, was The Meaning of Marriage by Timothy Keller. Great book to help um, solidify your marriage. Yeah. And, and, and my hope is this, like, for those that are divorced, that you can do better next time. For those that are not married yet, you have a plan of expectation before you get there. Mm -hmm. And those who are married, maybe we need to start fresh with the, the flat ground of forgiveness. Yeah. Forgiveness. And then forgiveness says we're going to toss out the bad. Mm -hmm. We're going to vision forward towards the good. Yeah. And we're going to implement some tools so that we're healthy emotionally with each other in love. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time that we could look into your word about relationships, about love, the way you love us, the way we are to love each other. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you be our helper, our guide, our support. Give us wisdom beyond our years. For those who are not married yet, Lord, I pray that they would use wisdom going into their relationships. For those that are divorced, God, help them to heal, mend their wounds, and help them to not make the same mistakes next time, but they can implement new tools. For those that are currently married, I pray, God, that there can be healing, restoration. For those that, that are newlyweds and they're still in, in the, the puppy love, love is blind phase, <laughs> that, God, they would implement these tools now so they do not inflict wounds within the marriage relationship. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for being our lead, our guide, our protector. We are blessed coming thank in. You, we'll Lord. be blessed going yes. out. Everything we set our hands to will prosper and be successful in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for watching today's message. My name is Ashley, and if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. First, we want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is take a next step on your journey, and we would love to help you do that. You can head on over to FamilyChurchNY.com or email us at team at FamilyChurchNY.com to get started today.